Welcome to another Tech Stuff Tuesday. This week, I'm going to teach you how to set your gains with the most superior tool there is next to your ears for detecting distortion, and that's the oscilloscope. You can look at the wave itself without using your ears to determine if that wave is clean, dirty, exactly how dirty it is. It's a wonderful tool. That's what she said. Now, this is something that you can get very cheap or you can get very expensive. I've had this one for about 15 years. I think I paid maybe 150 or 200 bucks for it back then. I have no idea if they still make this one, but I've seen a lot of different ones available. There are digital and there are analog. And the analog are gonna be like a cathode ray tube display, kind of like the old timey ones. Those are going to be the clearest picture, I believe, uh, but those can also go for a lot of money. There are inexpensive ones, uh, even cheaper than this. I think I've seen some for around a hundred bucks, maybe even a little bit less. And the thing you have to watch out with those is the actual resolution of the display itself. Uh, all LCD panels have a number of pixels. The lower the resolution, the more likely you see random pixels. So even though the wave itself might be very clean, you end up with some possibly squared off uh, peaks or valleys in your display as a result of the display itself not being able to have that high of resolution. So keep that in consideration when you're looking at that, uh, when looking at the cheaper ones. Uh, you wanna make sure that you're gonna be at least pretty close uh, with the display to what you're trying to look at. An oscilloscope will not tell you the actual amount of power because that would require also having current displayed, but it will display our voltage. So we can tell what voltage we have going on there along with our clean waveform. In a perfect world, this is something that you would do with a speaker load on it. And the reason I say that is things can and will change with the dynamics of having a speaker connected. If you're going to do it unloaded, you have to go off of the rated spec for impedance on that amplifier. If you go below rated impedance, odds are it's going to clip before the setting that you have it at. So this is a Sundown Audio SAX 50.4 is rated for 50 watts by four channels at four ohms. It is also rated at two ohms, but it does not double its power. It is not 100 by four. So we're going to address this from the four ohm, like you're only gonna have one four ohm speaker per channel. And one thing that we can also look at as where it should be. Now I say should, because sometimes people use digital multimeters and they figure out the amount of rail voltage that this should produce by maximum. And you can do that using Ohm's law. And you can find calculators for your phone because you like apps and you don't like doing math because you're youngsters. And on these Ohm's law calculators, you can plug in your power, 50 watts. You can plug in the impedance, four ohms. There you go, 14.1 volts, 3.5 amps. So that's what we should be looking at to produce 50 watts. It's possible that this amp could produce more power than it's supposed to, in which that voltage clean could be higher. When you wire to a lower impedance, your voltage should stay the same, but your amperage will go up. Now the reason you might induce clipping is a result of the amperage, not the voltage, but a lower voltage is where it will start clipping. So that's why you can't exactly go off of that if you're wiring below rated power. I'm looking at you people that wire everything to a half ohm or lower, even what's a one ohm amp. Now there's two points of where we can be clipping outside of the source itself. We're going to assume that the source input is not clipping. That's a big assumption. I've seen a lot of bass boosted stuff uh, that they call rebased and things like that, that are clipping. So we're going to assume that the source itself isn't clipping. We're using a zero dB track. There's three of them that I've created here. One is 40 Hertz. For example, if you were setting uh, a sub up and you wanted to use that. There's 1000 Hertz for doing mid ranges, if you were doing that. And to double check yourself, we've also got a sweep for 20 Hertz to 20,000 Hertz over 60 seconds. So assuming that your source is clean, We've got the head unit that could potentially clip, so we need to make sure this won't clip, and the amplifier clipping. That's where we're gonna set the gain and make sure 
that it will not clip. So we've got our super nice RCAs from Sundown Audio available on emfcaraudio.com. We've got our oscilloscope and the center pin is your positive. It doesn't matter if these are out of phase technically, but we're going to clip our positive on the tip and I can't get this clip inside here. So we're just going to hold it right on there. You can see we've got nothing right now. Now this track is our sweep and I started it at 20 hertz and you can see the frequency changing. I'm still going up on volume and we haven't got any clipping yet. Now we have clipping and it stayed clipping across this whole bandwidth. That's volume 26. We're gonna go back to volume 25. That is 2.1 volts and this head unit is a two volt head unit. So it's making the voltage just slightly over what's supposed to. We're letting it run the entire sweep from 20 to 20,000 Hertz and that's never changing. And the reason that's not changing, the head unit itself is set to flat and full range. We have no crossovers enabled. If we had a high pass on the full range outputs, you would see virtually no output or no output from 20 Hertz up until the point where it's high passed. That's one reason why we do the sweep. You can check those settings to see if you do have that enabled right here on the oscilloscope. We do have a constant voltage, everything's not clipping, and we are fine. So if you're gonna change anything on the head unit with your crossover or bass, treble, any EQ settings, anything that you're gonna change on the head unit, from this point, you need to do that now before you set anything with the amp we want to make sure our maximum clipping volume has all of the inputs from here that you're going to because if you boost bass or you boost any given frequency treble you set crossovers somehow differently you need to make sure that you're not clipping anywhere on here and that's the reason for the sweep if we use just one kilohertz but you have two kilohertz boosted here and then your trebles turned up and that's maybe 10 kilohertz you could be clipping at some point in that so you need to make sure that this is set where you want it and through that entire bandwidth you're not clipping if you have it set to volume 25 but you have the treble turned up you could be clipping here you need to find the maximum volume where no frequencies will be clipping so now that we know we're not gonna clip from the head unit at all. We're gonna to go to the amp. And for that, you wanna turn off the head unit. You don't wanna plug your RCAs in while the head unit or the amp is on. We're gonna turn it back on. And now we can go to the outputs. Now these you can only connect to one channel. If it's bridge, you can do it bridge, but basically wherever you're gonna put the speaker is where you wanna have these connected. So now we've got the positive and negative connected to one channel on the outputs. The gain is all the way down. Everything is set to high pass. We have no bass boost, no filtering, no subsonic, and we're playing on volume 25, our maximum non-clipping volume, the same 20 to 20,000 sweep. From here, we can go to the gain. Now, just to make this interesting, I'm gonna make sure that we set this to high pass. We've got 4.43 volts, and we're still showing a pretty solid signal up here, and this is gonna be a higher frequency. But when this goes back to a lower frequency, this is gonna fall off, because I'm filtering this at 50 hertz. I'm just going to start the track over. So we've got 0.8 volts, 1 volt, 1.4, 1.7, 2 volts, 3 volts. So as we get closer to the point where we're filtering, that voltage is going to go up. Now we're past the 50 hertz point. That's where it's high passed. So now we know we're clean there. We'll go to our gain. And we'll turn that up. Now remember, 15 volts 
is where it theoretically should max out. 20 volts, that's a heavy clip. 18 point something volts, barely 19 volts. Looks pretty clean. And you can always back it off a hair if you're not quite comfortable, but even around 18.0 volts, we're getting plenty of power. Slight clip at 19.7, and you see it doesn't take much on that gain. Uh, voltage fell off because we're below the high pass uh, limit. And if you wanna check this against one frequency, we can do that too. So we'll go to 1000 Hertz, and there we are. One steady 19 volts is perfectly clean. So this amplifier can put out more power than it is rated for. So what if we do some changes after the fact? Well, it's at one kilohertz. So if we give it bass, we're not going to detect that. So we're gonna go to our bass setting we're gonna to go to plus four. And you just barely, barely, barely see anything. That's at 19.2 volts, but you went up plus four. What if we go back to that sweep? We're within the high pass on the amplifier, starting out. That's climbing up, and once we get past 50 hertz, we are definitely clipping. That's a very hard clip at 20 volts because we went up on base on the head unit after the fact. So we want to turn that back and we're going to go to treble. There's a mid-level as well. We're going to go to treble and when we get up to that high point you're going to see this clip again. Yep, we've already started the clipping right there. Now we're into a hard clip. So it's not just a bass that's gonna do that. It's any frequency that you shift, be it bass, mid, or treble, anything in between. Now we've got the sweep, so we can tell this, but if we just picked one kilohertz or 40 hertz, that's not gonna tell us what we found out here. That's not gonna tell us treble, that's just mid-range. So we're gonna go back to zero because that's where we want it set. So the ideal scenario would be to have the gain in a very low position because you don't know exactly where that's gonna be. This amplifier will take, I believe it's six volts maximum. We've only got two volts coming out of the head unit. So obviously the gain setting all the way down is gonna be nowhere near correct. But from that point, you can listen to the actual sound quality. You can adjust your bass treble, your crossovers, EQ, adjust all of that and then go back and adjust your gains. That's the only way that you're gonna make sure that you're not clipping. Run that sweep with all of those settings and make sure that you're clean all the way through. Also keep in mind that when you're doing this, you probably want to have the car on. The reason being most amps are unregulated, meaning the more voltage you put into them, the more power you get out of them. There can be a 15 to 20% difference in your amplifier output. So if you're doing it at say 11 or 12 volts, your actual gain setting here might be slightly different than at 14 or even 15 volts. So make sure to do it with the car running. That could also tell you if you have any random noise that you may or may not hear will also show up in the oscilloscope because remember, the oscilloscope is best because you can see the entire wave. Know that this is not an exact science because you do have different recording volumes. So in this method, if you have a lower recording volume, you're not gonna get all the power out of the amplifier that you can, but you're not gonna clip either. So you could always leave yourself a little bit of headway on your volume, maybe uh, set the volume where this maxed out at 25, maybe set it so your max should be 23. They'll give you a couple extra clicks to compensate for the recording volume, but know this, your ear is the best way to detect distortion in real time. If it doesn't sound right, then turn it down. If it's dirty, it's clipping, that's bad. As long as it sounds clean, you're in good shape. So trust your ear with that. 
I know what you're thinking. I can't afford an oscilloscope or I wouldn't use it that often so I don't want to make that kind of investment. Well, the good news is in our next Tech Stuff Tuesday, I'm going to show you how to make a distortion detector that's incredibly simple for what I believe will be $20 or less. If you found this video helpful, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you're not already subscribed, consider subscribing and hit the notification bell so you're notified every time we have a new Tech Stuff Tuesday or other upload. You can support the channel on Patreon and link below, as well as shopping emfcaraudio.com for all your Sundown Audio, EMF Audio, SPC, and audio control needs. Share this video if you know people who don't really know how to set a gain very well. And I'll see you again in another Tech Stuff Tuesday.